New Orleans Saints wide receiver Michael Thomas might be trying not to get too excited about the potential of playing against the Atlanta Falcons week one, but it sure felt like a game week for the wide receiver at practice. We got all that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdat Nation and Houdat family? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Saints, your daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Locked On Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget, we're free and available on all podcast apps and on YouTube as well. And I'm your host, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter, your New Orleans Saints expert, credential member of the media, CrescentCitySports.com, USA Today, Saints Wire, Tuesdays on Locked On NFL, and here with you every single Monday through Friday on Locked On Saints. And today's episode of Locked On Saints is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Super, super easy and absolutely the way that daily fantasy should be. All you got to do is pick two to five players, whether or not they'll score more or less in their prize picks projections, and then you can walk away with 10 times your entry amount. And first time users can get a 100% deposit match up to $100 by using the promo code locked on at prizepicks.com. Once again, that is promo code locked on for a 100% deposit match up to $100 at prizepicks.com. On today's episode, we could be seeing Kirk Merritt get some action week one. I'll tell you why. Bradley Roby could finally be seeing the long road to CB2 in New Orleans come to a conclusion on Sunday, depending upon the health of Paul Sinadipo. We'll break that down along with your other big takeaway from the injury report and the biggest takeaway from the injury report being Michael Thomas present, participating, though limited, still feels like a game week for the veteran wide receiver. Michael Thomas spoke with media after practice uh, in the locker room. We saw him out on the field during the media availability for stretch and walk through and a couple of routes on air, things like that, right? Like smaller things we got to see. But man, it felt like Michael Thomas is ready to get out on the field this weekend. And if there's anything to take away from seeing Michael Thomas limited on the, uh, on the injury report, it's that the New Orleans Saints are wise and the New Orleans Saints are making a good decision to not overwork Michael Thomas immediately and instead continue to take their time with ramping him up throughout this week to get him back out on the field on Sunday. Seeing him limited is not a bad thing. As we discussed in the Wednesday episode of Locked on Saints, it would not surprise me and it wasn't going to surprise me to see Michael Thomas limited for maybe a couple of days this week, as long as he's got full participation on Friday. And even if he does expect to see a questionable game designation, because let's just face it, there's some gamesmanship to be had here. I don't know if that's the aim of the New Orleans Saints or Dennis Allen, but certainly wouldn't blame them for taking avail- taking advantage of what's available to them. So something to watch out for there. But when it comes to Michael Thomas, the big thing that I saw from him on Wednesday at the Saints training facility as we went through open locker room is just how good a mood he was in. I mean, he was all smiles. He was he's he's generally a nice guy. Like he's genuinely a nice guy anyway, but like you could just tell that this is a guy that hasn't gotten any bad news here recently, right? Like that's really what it felt like. And so I'm speculating in terms of like reading off the energy that he was giving, given and things like that. Forgive me. I'm sorry. I lived in Los Angeles for a little while. I do things like this still. But when it comes down to it, this was not a guy that's gotten some bad news very recently. And so whether he's excited because he's trending up or whether he's excited because he knows something that we don't, it's all good news on the front when it comes to Michael Thomas thus far. And until we get bad news, I'm not going to project it. I'm not going to pretend like it's there, right? We could sit there and we can hedge it all we want. Oh, Michael Thomas might play. He might not play this weekend and everything. But at this point, until we hear otherwise, I would be surprised if he doesn't play on Sunday. I'm that confident about it. And look, I can be very wrong in just two days. A lot of things can happen in a few days, right? I understand that. I'm taking a risk by saying that. I get it. But y'all love me because I want to talk to you straight. So here's me talking to you straight. I think Michael Thomas plays this Sunday based upon what we're seeing from him. Now, he said that's the goal for him, right, is to play on Sunday. So far, he's met all of his goals this offseason. He was out there to begin practice. He was out there all throughout training camp with the exception of the hamstring injury that, 
you know, guys like Keyshawn Johnson, his uncle are saying, look, it was never really a big deal. It was tightness. He ain't running a while. All of these things like Hoodie Jube just talked about her over on his show as well. Like the, that's really, really important context to keep in mind. This New Orleans Saints team needs Michael Thomas. And to an extent, Michael Thomas needs to be out on the field for himself this weekend. This guy has been through the ringer over the course of the past couple of years. Everybody talking trash about him. Even some of the people that originally loved him most were trashing him about not, you know, being dedicated to the team and not having the motivation and, you know, taking the money and running and all these other things, right? Like there's all of that. There's the injury, the surgery, the surgery that went wrong that led to another surgery. There's the recovery to that surgery, then the hamstring. There's so much that this guy has gone through over the course of the past couple of years that when I walked into that locker room today and I saw that smile on Michael Thomas's face, as of right now, I have no reason but to be, I, I have no reason to not be optimistic. I have every reason to be optimistic when it comes to Michael Thomas being out on that field. And as he said, it's the goal. He's not going to get too excited just yet or anything, but clearly he feels good. Clearly he is, let's just say, trending upwards. So as of right now, in terms of the biggest takeaway from the New Orleans Saints injury report this week or, or Wednesday, Michael Thomas being limited, it's not full, but it's still good news. Now, there was somebody that did not participate in Wednesday's practice that we should highlight, and that's Paulson Adebo. Now, Paulson Adebo has kind of mentioned that he you know, is working towards being available week one, but if he's not, what do the New Orleans Saints do? Again, they are uniquely equipped for this situation. We got that coming up for you as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. No rentals when it comes to the New Orleans Saints at cornerback because they have such depth there. They're in a really good spot, and you know what? You don't need rentals anymore either. So when you're out on the town or you're out of town, and whether you're in the UK, Canada, or the US, make sure you're checking out Turo, T-U-R-O, when you need a car. Turo is the uh, largest online car sharing uh, marketplace that you're going to find where you can book any car that you want, whenever you want, wherever you want, and making sure that you're doing what you need to do for your budget. Let's say that you're looking for a spacious like SUV or minivan for a family vacation. They got you covered. You need a classic or a luxury car for a special occasion. They got you covered. You're just looking for an economy car to get you from A to B. They can get that done. Or maybe you want to test drive that electric car that you've been considering buying as well. You've got everything you need that fits whatever it is that you need while you're on the road. Many tour hosts can even Bring and deliver the car right to you so you don't have to stand in lines at the rental car places and all that other stuff. Every trip is backed by liability insurance, terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Ditch the boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. All right, family, continuing on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. Thanks again for making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day Every day, the New Orleans Saints' first injury report of the season came out on Wednesday. We talked about the biggest takeaway, a limited practice for Michael Thomas not being a bad thing, but there was an absence that I think that New Orleans Saints fans should keep a close eye out on, and that was cornerback Paulson Adebo. Now, Paulson Adebo has been dealing with an injury. It was an ankle injury that's kept him out of practices over the course of the past couple of uh, weeks, including the Los Angeles Chargers preseason game, all of that. Now, he's spoken pretty confidently about it before that he feels like it's going in the right direction in terms of locker room conversations and things like that, but in that his goal is still to be out there on week one. However, not participating in practice on Wednesday is not something to overlook, right? So obviously, not participating on Wednesday doesn't mean that by Friday he can't be out there and ready to go by Sunday, right? There's a lot of things, just like we discussed with Michael Thomas, that can happen between now and then. You're just kind of looking at it the opposite way when it comes to Paul Sinadibo, who's kind of trending out, but things could change and he could be in and available come Sunday. So obviously you won't want to jump into any big conclusions, but it is worth asking what happens if Paul Sinadibo isn't able to go on Sunday. Well, it means that Bradley Roby's long journey, long road to the starting cornerback spot for the New Orleans Saints will finally conclude at least for one game. And that is... Looking at when Bradley Roby became a part of this team, which was September 8th, one month ago, excuse me, one year ago, just last year before the season began, the Saints trading a third round pick and an additional pick to get him to New Orleans after having already drafted Paul Sinadibo, which was also a third round pick or soon after drafting all that. Um, you end up in a situation there to where you have both of these guys that you've effectively invested a third round pick in. And for the Saints, you 
you were kind of looking at Bradley Roby as being the starting corner opposite Marshall and Lattimore, having lost Janoris Jenkins that offseason, all of that. So you went with the veteran guy that you traded for from the Houston Texans. However, there was one thing standing in the way of Bradley Roby becoming that starting corner, and it was a one-game suspension to start the season. Back in 2020, uh, Bradley Roby and actually a couple of other players were all suspended due to violations of the league's PED policy but there were only five games left in the season. So he was suspended for the last five games of 2020, missed the first game of 2021. Paul Sinadibo, who was drafted in the third round of the 2021 NFL Draft, went up against and had a great game against the reigning MVP and Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers, three total tackles. He also had a, a, a big interception as well as a pass defense. And not just any interception, a red zone interception that stalled the drive that Aaron Rodgers was leading to bring that Green Bay offense finally into the end zone, which they did not touch that entire game when the Saints won 38-3. And Paul Sanibo was a big part of that. You also saw him finish the season with 66 tackles, three interceptions, several passes, defense, all of that. Now, he struggled a little bit against the in the first game against the Atlanta Falcons, having the uh, big 64-yard uh, pass completion from Matt Ryan to Cordero Patterson down the field, which set up the game-winning field goal for Young Way Koo. So that was a bit of a down situation for him, but then he would come back and have that brilliant one-hand interception against the Falcons later on in the season. So lots of positive stuff from Paul Sanibo, who simply did not relinquish the cornerback two spot opposite Marshawn Lattimore the entirety of his rookie season. Now, all of a sudden, you had Bradley Roby, who was brought in to potentially be that starting corner to becoming valuable, valuable veteran depth when it comes to uh, the, the cornerback spot. And then going into this offseason, he was somebody that Bleacher Report mentioned that the Saints should consider trading. He was a guy that we talked about being somebody that could get you good trade value on the market if he did that. He took a pay cut. He stayed in New Orleans and then, he ends, or at least restructured his contract and extended his contract and then dropped his, uh, his cap hit, let me say it that way, stayed in New Orleans, became somebody that was again valuable veteran depth, to somebody that became the favorite to start in the slot after the Saints traded away C.J. Gardner-Johnson to the Philadelphia Eagles a week ago, and now could potentially finally be the starting cornerback opposite Marshall and Lattimore for the first time as a starter in his New Orleans Saints short tenure, which is what they traded, traded a third round pick for him to do last year. So what a crazy, just like long road that Bradley Roby has taken, but it goes to show you that perseverance goes a long way in the NFL. Now, that's only if Paul Sanadibo isn't able to go this weekend. Obviously, we still need to await two more practice days, Saturday, and even before the game on Sunday that will all be part of making that determination by the time that the New Orleans Saints kick off against the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta, uh, which, by the way, I'll be at that game uh, up in the press box, so I'll have you covered for that. Uh, but goodness gracious, like what a journey for, Paul, for Bradley Roby. And this week... It could finally happen. <laughs> he could finally be the starter for the New Orleans Saints. Now, he's credited with starts during his time in New Orleans as they were kind of going back and forth between he and Bradley, excuse me, he and Paulson Debo with certain matchups and things like that throughout the year uh, last year. But goodness, what a fantastic story. So maybe it'll work out for Bradley Roby to be a starter. If not, he'll still be a starter because he'll play in the slot, I believe, uh, in place of CJ Garner Johnson, along with guys like PJ Williams and Justin Evans, who will likely take snaps there as well. Uh, but it it was a long road for Bradley Roby, but it could finally be coming to a, a bit of a conclusion. And even if that happens, you should still expect Paul Sadibo as soon as he's ready to be that starter opposite Marshawn Lattimore. Bradley Roby had a really fantastic camp. Six interceptions, mostly on the outside, all the great things that he did. But Paul Sadibo was just solidly consistent all offseason and, ha- and was all his rookie season as well. Okay, we're not done breaking down the New Orleans Saints injury report yet. We got a couple of smaller notes for you and two absences on Sunday that could lead to Kirk Merritt getting the call up week one of the NFL season. He might be on the practice squad, but it doesn't mean that he won't get some reps this weekend. We got that coming up for you as we continue on to wrap up today's episode of Locked on Saints. Let's get it. Houdet Nation, wrap it up today's episode of Locked on Saints with the rest of the need to knows around the New Orleans Saints first practice participation report of the season, which came out on Wednesday, a couple of limited participations to highlight. Eric McCoy, Pete Werner, and uh, JT Gray, all limited. I saw each of those guys at practice. I, I don't expect that anything there, unless something worsens, is going to be a, a big issue. Uh, you also had Tanner Owen, who was out for, who did not participate in practice for um, non-injury-related 
reasons, illness. Uh, Landon Young, the veteran or the the versatile offensive lineman, left tackle, right tackle, was out with a hip injury. He was present though; he was there, just not dressed out. But two other players that are, are big takeaways here: wide receiver Traquan Smith dealing with a groin injury. He did not participate in practice today uh, on Wednesday, and then Dwayne Washington, running back with a hamstring injury, did not participate in practice on Wednesday as well. That's a running back and a wide receiver. Isn't there a guy not too long ago that the New Orleans Saints had as a wide receiver and then kind of moved over to running back just to see if it might work out? Oh, yeah. Destrahan native Kirk Merritt. That's right. There is a guy. Thank you, audience, for helping me get that. What a, what just What are the odds? What are the odds, right, that you have a wide receiver and a running back that are missing practice right now, at least to start the week. Again, as we've said the entire time, a lot of things can change between now and Sunday, right? But for uh, for, uh, Kirk Merritt, this could be the perfect setup for him because if you need another body at running back, you need another body at wide receiver, a guy that could take both of those snaps or snaps at both of those positions, there you go. Kirk Merritt, he can do it for you. So we've kind of discussed over the course of the past few weeks since Traquan Smith was injured during that Los Angeles Chargers preseason game that there are opportunities here for a guy like Kirk Merritt if, um, you know, uh, Traquan Smith goes to injury reserve or if the injury sustains for too long or anything like that. That's that's something we've been tracking, but he hasn't been sent to injury reserve or anything like that. We've seen him around the facility. We saw him out on the practice field today, but again, not dressed out, not participating. Dwayne Washington was at the facility. He was in the locker room today. So these guys are around, right? So they're not going injured reserve or anything like that, at least at this time. And so for a guy like Kirk Merritt, though, if either or or both can't go, he's the perfect fill-in for both of them. Now, Kirk Merritt did change his number here recently to the number 33 from 85. I asked him about it in the locker room after practice today. And he said that the reason why he changed to 33 was because it was his high school number at Destrahan High School. So it was him still representing his city, basically, while you know, playing for his childhood favorite team that everyone in that city roots for. So it's a really cool uh, symbiosis in terms of what an awesome like tribute it is to go back to that number. But he did mention to me that like it ain't really about running back. But if he needs to take those snaps, he can. He did take snaps today. We did see him mostly in like walkthrough and stuff like that with the wide receiver group. But where he took snaps and stuff like that, we kind of have to wait to see what actually happens on Sunday if he gets that game day elevation. But remember, Every team across the NFL can elevate two players from their practice squad every single week to the active roster or their game day roster to participate in that game. Every player can be elevated three times before they must be signed to the 53-man roster in order to appear on the active roster again. So get one of those out of the way early, and then maybe by the time you get to the end of the season, Kirk Merritt is an active roster member. And it could also happen for guys like Dejon Dixon and Rashid Shaheed as well. Don't underestimate the opportunity to get Rashid Shaheed in finally as somebody that can uh, return some kicks and return some punts for you, right? Like I wouldn't be surprised to see even that elevation early on in the season, right? To make sure that you have the depth behind uh, uh, Deontay Hardy as your returner available. But it feels like if guys like Traquan Smith and uh, Dwayne Washington both can't go, that Kirk Merritt is kind of the perfect solution for you if you need a little bit of depth at both of those spots out wide or in the backfield. Um, a couple of other little notes for you, just some numbers things. Like I mentioned, Kirk Merritt changed to 33. Mark Ingram was still wearing five. Jarvis Landry was still wearing 80. I'll keep you updated on that because I know there's some rumors that some of those things will change. Jake Lutton, the new New Orleans Saints quarterback on the practice squad, was at number 16. And I did also notice that Marcus Davenport and Ryan Ramchick either looked to have limited days or at least some limited participation, though they didn't show up on the injury report. So that's good news for the New Orleans Saints and for both players. Sometimes during these like practice opening, uh, you know, availabilities and things like that. We'll see guys out there for stretch, but then during the individual drills, they go away. It could be a rehab thing or a workout thing that they're working on, but then they end up coming back out onto the field after we've left. But I did notice that they weren't there for some of the walkthrough and stuff like that. So just a couple of names, keep an eye out on throughout the rest of the week. I think I get you caught up on everything around the New Orleans Saints uh, injury report, not just the list for you. We're breaking it all down, telling you what's important, what you should care about. Looking into tomorrow's practice participation report, what you're waiting for is another limited day by Michael Thomas. That's okay. You're hoping that Paul Sinadibo maybe takes a step forward and you're looking for limited days continuing for guys like Pete Werner and Eric McCoy, JT Gray, and some of the others that you're seeing limited today. Don't expect with the sort of cautious way that the New Orleans Saints 
have taken their approach, and some of this might be Matt Rea, right, the new director of sports science. Don't be surprised to see them continue to be cautious around injuries, seeing two limited days and a full day of participation, and then probably even a questionable game day designation before they get to the field on Sunday. None of that will be bad news as long as they hit the field on Sunday. So just know that like these things are not set in stone as of right now. So we'll see how it all goes all throughout the week. Coming up, either tomorrow morning or later on today, depending upon when you watch this episode, crossover Thursday with Aaron Freeman. Aaron Freeman thinks that the the Falcons are going to win. And it's just the craziest thing to me because like how, Sway? How? So I'm going to tell you and him all the reasons that the New Orleans Saints are going to beat the Atlanta Falcons this weekend, or at least should, right? We shouldn't sleep on any teams out there at any time. Sorry, I had a little fuzz up there. I was getting rid of that if you're watching on YouTube. (laughs) So we'll have all that for you tomorrow, as well as the biggest stories, the key matchups, and our score predictions to break it all down for you uh, with Aaron Freeman of Locked On Falcons. As always, y'all, I appreciate you coming through for what I'm going to call, uh, I'm I'm probably just going to call them two-a-day Thursdays. We might have some two-a-day Tuesdays as well throughout the season. So I appreciate y'all coming through for another episode of Locked on Saints. And as always, making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget to go and check out that ultimate pro football preview 2022. NFC South is in the books. NFC West on the way with game day today for the uh, Los Angeles Rams uh, taking on the Buffalo Bills. A potential Super Bowl um, Super Bowl preview, unless you ask Tony Wiggins over at Locked on NFL, who says the New Orleans Saints are Super Bowl contenders. And that's why we love Tony Wiggins of Locked on NFL and Locked on Jaguars. So I appreciate y'all as always making us your first listen and for making us a part of your day, a part of your routine for saying yes to me and the show. As always, if you see me, say hi. And if you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how you're mom and them. And trust you, that nation, I'll holla at you.